Hi guys. So this is not my, um, I don't even know how to say it. This is not the way that I usually make my YouTubes. Um, but I figured because this one is really going to be uh, kind of a vlog about what's going on with my health that I, one, I just don't really have the energy to put myself together um, the way I usually would for a video, but I also just wanted to show what's actually going on with my health and just to be really honest about it because um, it's, you know, it's something like you can definitely cover up a lot with makeup and good lighting and acting like you have energy, but um, I have been struggling with my health for the past several years. Um, I haven't felt well for about five years. I've had periods where I felt better and periods where I felt worse. Um, the beginning of this was definitely triggered by a toxic mold exposure. Um, but what I'm going to say is just that I've done anything and everything to get better from that, from removing mycotoxins from my body, um, using a, a sauna, a low EMF sauna, um, using a PEMF, so that's pulsed electromagnetic frequency mat um, that I go on every single night before I sleep. So I've done binders, I've in, you know increased my drainage, I've gotten rid of gallstones, I've done the works. And um, just to kind of like show you, because I feel like a lot of things come out in skin, um, this is what my skin is doing. So these are big raised bumps and I have raised bumps. It's harder to see, but I'll come in a little closer here. Um, and my eyes are constantly bloodshot. So they've been bloodshot for five years. Um, Visine doesn't remove my eyes being bloodshot. It, um, it doesn't really do anything for me. So, um, and I, I kept thinking that it was going to get better because I'm gonna just adjust my camera a little bit, you guys, sorry. I feel like it's a little bit pointing down. Um, that should be better. So anyway, um, I was really waiting for my bloodshot eyes to clear up and I was waiting for you know, the last 20% of my health to clear up and it just hasn't been clearing up. So I, I know I made another video about this, but I'm just going to be documenting this. Um, I have my, I have breast explant surgery scheduled. So that's to remove my breast implants. And, um, there's really, at this point, there's nothing else that I can attribute all of these weird symptoms to. Um, I think I'm actually going to get, I just filled out a symptoms list. So excuse, it's a little bit messy in here, which it's usually never messy, but um, just because I haven't had as much energy, I just didn't put away all my clutter and stuff. So excuse the fact that it's not how it usually is for YouTube, but I just felt like it was more important to make this video. And you know, the mess that's in the background is just, it's very indicative of how I feel. Um, so I got breast implants nine years ago and I heard a lot about breast implant illness and it, I don't know why, but I just didn't think it could be true. Maybe I didn't think it could be true because I wanted to keep my breast implants, um, but it just didn't seem like it could be true because so many people have them and um, it's hard to understand um, why they would allow people to get them if they could have such bad side effects. So, and. I will be fine. I'm getting my breast implants out and I truly, I know with all my heart and I'm going to manifest health. I know I'm going to get better after I remove them. Um, but I think that it should definitely be taken more seriously because you know, it's not something, it's not like a pill that if you have a reaction to it, you can just stop taking it and that reaction goes away. It's something that is implanted into your body and they should be so safe and so studied and um, they shouldn't be failing and making so many women sick. I mean, I think I just heard a statistic and it's 1.8% of women that get them have a reaction. In my mind, that's only the women that figure out why they're feeling bad. Um, I have a lot of very, very smart friends and several people told me that they thought that it might be my implants and I really didn't want to believe them. And I'm lucky because I had people telling me, but not every single person has that in their life, right? And not every single person can get to the best surgeon. So I'm booked with the best surgeon to take them out. 
and granted it's going to be really expensive and I haven't quite figured out the whole expense, but I just know that at this point I'm, I'm doing whatever it takes, right? So, okay, this is a list of common breast implant um, symptoms. I got it from the Breast Implant Illness Board. Um, it's uh, healingbreastimplantillness.com. It's been a really good resource, uh, resource for me. They also have a Facebook page and that's been really helpful. And it's really stunning and it makes me really sad to see so many other women experiencing this issue. So anyway, sorry that it makes me so emotional, but um, I'm really upset that other people are going through the same thing. And I'm also really emotional right now because I just, I just don't feel that well. And I, I will say, I think something changed with my implants because they have been giving me burning and painful sensations. So that also adds to not feeling well. But so this is the breast implant illness symptoms. And I checked off the things that I'm experiencing now. Um, fatigue, brain fog, memory loss, cognition problems. Um, I have trouble remembering words a lot. And you know, people kind of laugh when it happens, but it's happening all the time now. Um, at least once a day, which is really unusual for me. Um, muscle pain and weakness. I just don't feel I'm not as strong as I used to be. There's a massive difference in my strength. Um, joint pain of neck, um, shoulder, back, hip, knee. So definitely for me, my feet, my knees, my back, my neck, um, hair loss. Yes. I will say that some of my hair seemed to grow back in, but I've also been doing, um, a million different things to make it more healthful and do everything I can. Um, premature aging of skin. And yes, am I 45? Of course, but, um, my skin changed so much in the last five years and I know it's going to change back after I take these implants out because the constant inflammation is definitely causing early aging. Skin itching and various rashes. I mean, the bumps on my face are a rash. Um, I have bumps. I have like a, a bump that formed here. Um, I have a big bump, you can't really see it. But on my ear, there's a big red bump right here. And then I won't show you, but I have bumps here and bumps on my back as well. And there's some weird bumps on my legs too, which is great. Um, inflammation, I have tons of inflammation, poor sleep, dry eyes, adrenal fatigue, um, low libido. I actually have no libido. It completely dropped off. Um, slow healing and easy bruising. I had something on my elbow this summer that bled for six weeks. Um, Throat clearing and difficulty swallowing, yes, um, for sure. Nausea, leaky gut, SIBO, yes. Irritable bowel syndrome, night sweats, candida, food intolerances, heart palpitations, frequent urination, <laughs> um, shortness of breath, definitely. I had a lot of breathing problems in Aspen. Um, pain or burning around implant, uh, liver problems, kidney problems, and gallbladder problems, yes. Um, anxiety, you know, and I don't know, I don't know if the anxiety is caused by the implants or if it's just caused, I, I don't really know where the anxiety is coming from, but I do think that anxiety can be caused by inflammation. Um, and then of course, uh, <laughs> this one, feeling like you're dying, I think just the fatigue, the fatigue is so real, so I don't, I don't know. I would say as far as health, I feel like my health is decreasing. And technically, if your health is decreasing, you're getting closer to dying. I don't think I'm about to die and I sure hope not because I have so much to live for and I have such an awesome life. Um, but I definitely don't feel like I'm getting healthier and, and living more. Um, fatigue is the biggest thing. So the past few days, I've been doing everything I can just to rest and take it easy. And I'm just still so, so tired. Um, I had made this a lot better after I treated myself or got treated from, um, from the mold exposure, but I could definitely tell that there was something new and there was something that was still bother bothering my body. So it is definitely the breast implants. Um, so I just wanted to come on. I know this isn't like my favorite kind of video to make, but I also wanted to just have this video because I know that um, I'm going to heal after I take out my implants and I wanted to document it how I was feeling now so that 
I could compare the two. Um, so it's just been a really huge thing. I don't think it's something that I can afford to put off for my health. And I just feel so sad when I think about that I did this. So why am I sharing this? I'm not sharing this to make you feel bad for me. You have no reason to feel bad for me. Don't, <laughs> don't cry for me because I'm crying. But if you are thinking about getting a breast augmentation, just know that at some point, this most likely will probably be you as well. Um, you might not know um, why it's happening. You might think it's aging. You might think you're overworking. You might think you need a different supplement. Um, but I think it's really akin to if you were in a rowboat and that rowboat had a hole and you can take you know, a bucket and keep bailing out the water and it might get better sometimes. You, know, you might not quite be sinking quite as much, but that hole is still going to be there. And until you fix the hole, um, I don't think that our bodies can really get better. And so for me, I think removing my implants is going to be a really important part of fixing the hole of what's really taking down my health and what I feel like has robbed of just me of a bunch of years of enjoyment and time with my husband and time with my friends. Um, so anyway, God, it's just so emotional. Sorry, it's just like, I feel regretful. I feel regretful. I was looking for the surgery dates to try to get my um, original surgery or surgical records. And I felt so sad when I saw the exchange between me and the surgical coordinator. And I also just felt like, how was I so stupid to think that any of that entire process was okay? Um, the email that I got from the surgical coordinator when I was waking up from having my implants um, she asked me if I could do her hair when I was in Beverly Hills. And this is, I'm recovering from surgery, and she wrote me and asked me if I could do her hair. Um, I think that tells you a lot about the unprofessionalism. Um, and, I mean, I think my knowledge base was so different of what I thought was okay. Um, the surgeon that I'm going to, his name is Dr. Jay Chun. He's in Newport Beach, California, which is a big hike. Um, but he is known as the best in the business. Um, this is all that he does. He's passionate about it. He's spoken to the FDA and he is a microsurgeon. So obviously you want as little of your actual breast tissue removed as possible. Although if you have silicone that has ruptured into it, then you need to get that removed. So we'll see, you know, what condition I am in when this all happens, but, um, he is the best. So my husband and I are traveling and I'm going to have surgery with him mid-May. Um, I'm probably not going to post this until after I've had my surgery. Um, but I think it's important to do. And um, actually, I, I don't think it's important to do. I think it's like a life-saving surgery, and I'm really thankful that he does it. Um, but just wanted to share, just there's so many emotions that go on with this. Like, it's hard to let go of something that you've had for so long. But when I, whenever I have trouble making a decision um, and sticking to something, I always think like, okay, well, what if I didn't take these out? And I think about where would my health be in a year? Where would my health be in five years? And I honestly think that if I don't take these out, I don't think I would be alive in five years or I would be so incredibly sick that it would be as if I were not alive. So um, I'm already getting a lot of super weird symptoms from them. So I know it's time for them to go. So there really is no choice and I'm afraid of the whole surgery part. I'm afraid of the healing part. I'm not so much afraid of how I look. Um, I think hopefully he'll be able to preserve some parts of me that I had before. Um, but you know, there's no guarantees. So when I wake up and when I heal, I guess that's when I'm really going to find out, you know, my end result. Um, but I just wanted to share what is going on with that. Um, I think I'm going to make a different vlog video about uh, the other stuff that doesn't pertain to that that's also going on in my life right now because there's just a lot of stuff that is coming to the head or coming to a head at the same time. Um, but if you are thinking about breast implants, please know that women that are talking about getting ill from their implants, they're not crazy. It's not in their head. Their bodies do not want these implants in them. They are leaking silicone even if they don't have a rupture. They are giving them constant inflammation, neurological symptoms, and physical symptoms. And as much as you might not want that to be true, it doesn't change the fact that it's true. And you know, to each their own, it's up to you if you want to get plastic surgery. Um, but 
I would give anything to have not gotten this surgery and I've had it for nine years and um, I think they're ticking time bombs. You might be okay, right? When you get it, you might be okay for three or four years. But when that changes, um, you know, there's no guarantee that any of these changes in your body are reversible. So I will be manifesting health. I will be manifesting that all these symptoms are going to change, but just know like on the breast implant illness board that I'm on, there's 128,000 women on there. That's 128,000 women that are not imagining their symptoms. And those are the women that have figured it out. Those are the women that have admitted it. So um, I will save this footage so I can look back at it and I can see all of this. This is just not normal. Um, and this is where I almost always get my rosacea outbreaks. And I have a feeling that this is the breast that's having the most issues. So we will see when I get things cleared up. But thank you for watching. I'm, I'm sorry for the emotions, but it's such an emotional time for me. So just wanted to make this stay healthy and stay beautiful. And please do not get implants. Um, I will be linking to a few resources below. I'm going to link to my surgeon. Um, I'm going to link to the uh, implant illness board. And I will link to a few of the things I'm going to buy for surgery too, in case anybody wants to see those things. I got some healthier pillows that are like low VOC and um, some surgical bras and things like that. So not my most exciting Amazon or whatever links, but I'll still share them in case anybody needs them. Um, stay healthy and stay beautiful.